Hello, uh, I'm Keith Halpern and this is my co-host uh, Mo Burnick. Uh, Hi, welcome to our show. Today we are taping from the ARC. This is uh, Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. And what we'll be doing today is covering our meeting in which we're going to be having uh, a discussion on autism and video game, games, their connection. And we're also going to be interviewing some of the ARC members and participants. Well, Thank you, Keith. Today we'll be beginning with our co-chair, Gregory Yates, who will be discussing the subject of today's program, uh, Autism and Video Games. Yes, we're going to start off with Autism and Video Games. We're going to run a video by YouTuber Noggin, in which he discusses a provocative theory that the Smash Brothers video franchise, the Nintendo franchise, uh, is actually designed from the point of view of an autistic boy. So we're just going to roll it and see whether we agree with his uh, assessment of the video game, but also he presents a, uh, a kind of an overview of autism, which I think is per per very perceptive for someone who's not from the autism community at all. He's done a lot of research, and I just am curious to see how people respond to that. So that's what we're All right, so, so tell us, what, is, what are these video games you just mentioned? Okay, they are Smash Brothers. No. Nintendo is a, a company that makes video games. I'm actually not a video game player much myself, but I ran across this video. So um, uh, these games that we'll be talking about are video games made to play on Nintendo equipment and made by the Nintendo company. And how many, ki many autistic kids play these games? Well, that's a good question. I have a feeling that a large number of autistic people do play video games for a lot of reasons. And some autistic people probably avoid them like the plague for a lot of reasons too. Uh, many of the many video games are very full of uh, stimulation, you know, bright flashing things and loud sounds, which would be a problem for some autistic people. Uh, but that's not a problem for all people on the autism spectrum. And uh, how many games a week do they do these kids play? I have no idea. Uh, I know that some people almost spend their entire life in front of uh, uh, screens playing video games. But I think they're probably the rare exceptions for most people. Since you are a gamer yourself, uh, Greg, how did you get the original tie-in between gaming and uh, autism? I have, uh, I use Google to search for themes of interest to me automatically, and it sends me emails when it hits something that it thinks is going to be of interest to me that matches my search strings. So I think that's how I ran across this uh, YouTube video. Very interesting. Uh, have you run across in your search of this if there are other links or other people either on the spectrum or off the spectrum, as this gentleman is, uh, who've been making links between uh, gaming and autism? Uh, if there are such links, uh, I haven't run across them. I'm sure there are. I haven't done any research into that. Uh, the particular string that this one hit was autism theory, mm -hmm. and this is a theory. He has, a, you know, it's a theory. So, uh, anyway, let's get. here's one of our fellow members, Jim, who has been involved with video games. Hi, um, I'm ending up in 1997. I taught myself 3D perspective graphics and wrote a primitive first-person shooter game that I won an award with at MacHack in 1997. At this time, I was living in a basement storeroom and delivering pizzas to support myself. At the same time, this, uh, a book called Snow Crash came out where there was this fellow who was delivering pizzas and living in, in, a, in a storage uh, shed, one of these rented place type of things, and he was writing visual, uh, uh, virtual reality uh, programs. And I, my daughter called me up and says, hey, Dad, you ought to read this book. I'm going to roll a YouTube video by YouTuber Noggin, spelled with a G. I wonder if he's agnostic. Uh, about the, the, his theory that the Smash Brothers franchise produced by Nintendo is designed from the point of view of an autistic boy. Now, there's two parts to this. One is, is he right about the game? But the other is, He's somebody from outside the autism community, as far as I'm aware, uh, who has done a really good job of basically describing some of the basics of autism. And that's actually kind of as much of the uh, interest today for us. Is, is his description of autism 
uh, does it jive with our own experience? Do we think he's spot on? Uh, because it, it occurs to me this might actually be a good general introduction to autism for people who are not familiar with some of its issues. So what I'm going to do, now as a YouTuber, many people on YouTube you may have noticed talk fast because they're trying to cram their content into a short video. It's probably too fast for, I, I mean I had to stop it as I was watching to absorb what he was saying. So what I'm going to do is just roll it a little bit, a bit at a time and when it comes to a point of some interest I think to us, I'm going to stop it and open it up for discussion. And we're just going to go through, and there's half a dozen points that we're going to get through. So we won't have a whole lot of time to discuss any one of them. Uh, so I may cut discussion off even though it's going to be great ideas that people haven't said yet. What you can do is if uh, there's something, some burning response that you didn't get a chance to say, hold it to the end and if we have time we get back to it. Let me get this out of the way now. I am not talking about the fan base in any way. I know that on certain parts of the internet, calling certain types of Smash Brothers fans autistic is commonplace, but here we are talking strictly about the game franchise itself, the original, Melee, Brawl, 4 Wii U, and 4 3DS. Okay, so you get that he's not talking about the people who play the games. That's not the point of his video. You know, some people who play the, uh, video games are autistic and some aren't, and some autistic people play video games and some don't, but that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the game itself. It's like it's made from the point of view of an autistic boy. That's, these are the games we'll be talking about. There's four of them, I gather. One, two, three, four? Five. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a fifth one there, but for some reason he talks about four. Um, well, and they have names. The <laughs> uh, I don't know what four. Four Wii U. Smash four. See? That title is actually pretty genius. Now before I trigger any of you by merely mentioning autism, let me just say that there are many, many misconceptions about autism and its symptoms, and as such I will only be using information from scholarly sources, from people who study autism and other mental disorders for a living. And that is misconception number one. Autism is not a mental disorder. It's a neurological one, meaning, instead of being caused by chemical imbalances in the brain, having autism means you have physical abnormalities in your brain structure, and have since birth. But what causes this change in structure is still being looked into. What scientists do know is that it is not caused by how the child is raised, vaccines, and most certainly not cow's milk. Oh my word, PETA. Having autism also doesn't mean you will become a savant of some kind. You won't necessarily memorize the dictionary or think out mathematical equations faster than a calculator. Only about 10% of people on the autism spectrum have this ability in one form or another. I personally know someone who has memorized, word for word, every episode of Pokemon and Star Trek. Not as useful as memorizing the dictionary, but pretty cool nonetheless. On the other end, another misconception is that all autistic people are socially and empathetically inept. This too only affects a portion of people with autism. In fact, there are plethoras upon plethoras of symptoms that autistic people can show, from physically not being able to comprehend empathy to being over-empathetical, from being able to memorize multiple languages to physically not being able to understand sarcasm or idioms. But no single person with autism can have all of the autistic symptoms, though some have more than others and can have them to various degrees. This is one reason why autism is diagnosed in a spectrum consisting of five disorders, autism, Asperger's syndrome, childhood disintegrative disorder, Rett syndrome, and pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, or other. Now with all this in mind, let's move on. So it is somewhat common knowledge that Smash Brothers is completely a non-canon game. Say what? In fact, looking at the opening of the original Smash Brothers, it shows that the fighters are toys being played with on a desk in a child's bedroom, and things like tissue boxes and pencils are being used as stage platforms. All of this is being controlled by the hand, which, while it is disembodied, can be used as a symbol for the child setting up playtime. And the final boss, Master Hand, is merely the child pretending his hand is a monster. That's right, all of Smash Brothers takes place in the imagination of a child, living with autism. And yes, I will refer to this child as a male because statistically speaking, four out of every five people with autism are male. 
Now, some may refute this theory immediately by claiming that children with autism have no imagination and thus could not think up these magical fight scenes, but no, that is another misconception. Like the other misconceptions I mentioned, it does hold some ground to a point. Physically not being able to imagine fight scenes as vivid and detailed as the scenes we see in Smash Brothers is one of the many symptoms some autistic children have to deal with. But not all of those with autism deal with it. Each person with autism has their own set of symptoms pulled from a pool. A very common symptom that leads some to believe they lack imagination is that they prefer living in routine. They like sticking to a schedule and not differing from it too much, sometimes to an extreme like we see in the movie Rain Man. And sticking to such routines means you don't want to be creative with your time, and not being creative means you lack imagination, which is true to an extent, but many studies have shown that even those with the autistic symptom of needing to stick to routines can be creative and have vivid imaginations if you put the time to use such creativity into their schedule. Set aside an hour a day to paint something, and they will paint something creatively, with their imagination, and some people with autism can actually imagine up stories and images with even more detail than most of the neurotypical population. And that is yet another symptom that can be pulled from the pool, albeit not as common of one. And even with the master hand, rather than imagining up a new villain to fight, he simply uses his own hand, his hand that also sets up the fights with the toys to begin with the toys that his parents have bought for him. His parents are introducing him to video games. His first Nintendo, his first Game Boy, he loves it so much. And as he learns more about it, he wants more toys of more characters. He starts off with the classics, Mario, Link, Samus, Pikachu, and eventually gets his hands on some of the not-so-well-known games, Earthbound, F-Zero, and he finally catches a Jigglypuff in Pokemon. And then his dad finally starts playing Mario with him, which introduces him to Luigi. He slowly begins to develop an obsession of the medium, an obsession with Nintendo. Nintendo becomes part of his routine. Obsessions, like routines, are part of another common symptom of autism. And these obsessions can range from something as specific as just Pikachu, or as wide as Nintendo as a whole. When the obsessions are found in things like wordplay or maps, you often get those with autism to a savant ability, such as having every road in California memorized. Though most of those with the autistic symptom of being obsessed of something don't wind up obsessing over such things. Instead, more commonly, and somewhat stereotypically, it falls into things such as Minecraft, My Little Pony. As most of the time, these obsessions develop in childhood, especially early childhood, and they rarely get grown out of. An autistic child that finds themselves obsessed with Nintendo will probably be with them for life. So now going forward in history, Super Smash Bros. Melee, our autistic friend has now been introduced to even more Nintendo characters, and with his Nintendo obsession, he's gone back and played some older Nintendo games. He's even gone out and learned Japanese to be able to play some of the Japan-exclusive Nintendo games, specifically Fire Emblem. And of course, he has added to his collection of toys to play with. Though instead of plush toys, he gets action figures and trophies. As we see in the opening of Melee, Mario pops in as a statue before what we can assume as THE POWER OF IMAGINATION brings him to life to fight Link. Melee also introduces another character, one that does not originate from any other Nintendo franchise. Crazy Hand. The primary difference between Master Hand and Crazy Hand is that Crazy Hand is, well, crazy. Always moving and twitching about almost as if it doesn't have any control over itself. Now let's talk about some other disorders on the autism spectrum, Asperger's. Like autism, Asperger's has a pool of symptoms that each individual pulls a few from. One of these is issues with motor skills, which in itself is also a spectrum. It can range from simply not being capable of having decent handwriting all the way to frequent twitches, which occasionally are very hard. Also, People with this often never feel comfortable in their own skin, and feel the need to keep moving at least one part of their body. In this case, our autistic friend in Smash Brothers does so with his left hand, and due to its more crazy nature, he himself refers to it as his crazy hand, opposed to his dominant right hand, the master hand. 
But wouldn't this mean that he has Asperger's? While still in the autism spectrum, Asperger's isn't the same as your traditional autism, right? Well, no. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is pretty much the bible of mental and neurological disorders, no longer considers Asperger's to be separate from autism spectrum disorder. They are far too similar for there to be a need of separating them. So our friend here still has autism, and happens to have some of the symptoms previously reserved only for Asperger's. And now we move on to Brawl. We can now assume that the boy has grown into at least a middle schooler. He is starting to make some friends. Some that didn't have the same early childhood he had. Instead of pure Nintendo kids, we have a kid who played Metal Gear instead of Mario, and another friend who didn't even own a Nintendo system. He had Sega systems and grew up with Sonic. Hanging out with these new friends, they introduce him to Snake and Sonic, two great franchises that he too finds a fondness of, and adds their merchandise to his collection. Getting into the Subspace Emissary, the plot, the story mode of Brawl, really introduces some deep and troubling elements to this whole thing. First of all, all of the characters are mute, they never speak. This too is a higher level symptom of autism, as autism is primarily an issue with social behavior. And as revealed near the end, we see Master Hand being controlled by Taboo, like a puppet. And Master Hand, who is the kid remember, doesn't like it. But for now, while being puppeted, has no choice but to conform. This Taboo is bullying personified. And I don't just mean the school bullies picking on the autistic kid for having social problems and being a Nintendo fanboy. I also mean some of the people who are trying to help. Who try to help by trying to conform him into society's rules and expectations. This is exactly the kind of bullying Taboo is doing. And it doesn't stop there. In Smash 4, when Master Hand gets defeated while Crazy Hand is still up, Master Core appears from the Hand, starting off as a beast of pure darkness, which then transforms into a group of shadowy blades, and then a large, dark, shadowy mess of yourself. Let me tell you about just one more common symptom of autism. Amplified emotions. Anything that can cause someone to be upset would likely cause someone with autism to become even more upset. Being different and strange. Many people, even those without autism, feel this from time to time. So now amplify that feeling. As the kid grows up and hits puberty, his hormones start pulsating through his body, causing emotions to flourish on their own. He is still being pressured to fit in. His fear of his crazy hand taking over and dominating his life takes over his entire being. And either as a plea for attention for help, or to forget about the previous pains dealing with a life surrounded by bullies, his already emotional state of mind becomes amplified, and he resorts to using blades to forget the previous pains. As life progresses in a world where he doesn't fit in, and those trying to help him only want to control him, he falls into their peer pressure and sees that his biggest enemy is his own disability. Himself. But he fights it. He fights back the fear, he fought back the cutting, he fought back against his own dark emotions, he got to the core of the problem and smashed it away, using what he loves most, Nintendo. He found friends that he could fit in with, fellow Nintendo fans, and even those gamers who didn't grow up strictly on Nintendo. And even though some friends leave, there are always others that will pop up, defend, and support him, cheering him on. Cheering him on to smash away the darkness. Life is good, even when you are neurologically diverse. And that is what Super Smash Brothers stands for.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have just finished our meeting, and it was extremely well attended with well over 50 people. And what we're now going to be doing is having some brief interviews with some of our participants about uh, their thoughts on the film. The first person that Will and I will be talking to is Jonathan R. And Jonathan, uh, what were your thoughts about the film that you saw? Well, um, what really drew me to the meeting was how uh, the game Smash Brothers relates to uh, the autism spectrum and after seeing the viewing I learned a lot. I learned, um, I thought it was a very well educated experience and I um, highly recommend, um, you know, if you guys ever catch um, this video, it is uh, really for all those who um, are, feel like they um, play too many video games or don't know why they play too many video games. You know, this is not just for people with autism. But you can, anybody can see this, and they can get um, full. Uh, they can comprehend um, after seeing this video uh, why you have it, and um, that's that's what I felt after watching. It, and I hope you feel that way as well. Thank you. Will, um, how how many games how, have you played over the last over the last year? Um, I recently got a Wii U, so I, I got a couple of games. Um, the Wii U, uh, including you know what, what we just watched, Smash Brothers and uh, Super Luigi U, and um, I'm playing a lot of Fire Emblem. Um, very frustrating, but uh, a few. Which game is your favorite? Uh, that's a good question. I, I guess it's um, it, it changes. Uh, I, one day I'll say it's Smash Brothers, and then next it'll be Fire Emblem. Which Fire Emblem? Probably Awakening. Um, so, it's, or you know, one day it'll be a Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, so it, it it really just depends on the day and depends on my mood. And uh, would you recommend these games to stu to all autistic members? Oh, oh yeah. Um, I I think if you're looking for um, a different um, way of playing a game, like for me growing up, I was all into about side scrolling. You know, I think I only played like a couple of RPG games, but then I think I got. A, Finally, got a different change of pace uh, last couple, couple of years playing uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, and I got really addicted to that. And I got addicted to Awakening, and uh, I would recommend, um, yeah, I would recommend the games I like to um, people who've never played Fire Emblem, or, in, to, or to even lesser extent, to people who've never played Smash Brothers. I'd recommend all these games I play because they're really, really addicting and really fun. Um, if you don't like them, then you know it's, it's fine. You know, but I, I personally like them, and I, I, I would hope that people. Uh, the autism spectrum, or anybody really would like things. Jonathan, uh, since this is life on the autism spectrum, uh, what, what was your perspective on uh, on the film? A, uh, how it uh, related to people on the spectrum, and two, based on your experience, um, are there some games? I know you briefly mentioned some mm -hmm. that might be particularly good for people on the spectrum, as you understand it, and other games which you would say. Please avoid these at all costs. They would be very distressing to you. Well, I mean, if it's one thing I learned during this meeting is that you know every person with autism is different. There's a different spectrum, so I can't really speak for people because I know a lot of people who are autistic um, who like like RPG games. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of RPG games. There are some, but. But they're like, you know, I, I've like I know people who like Legend of Zelda. But for you know people um, who want to, people who want to play something simple, I would say um, people who are really into like you know the simplistics of the mechanics and are really into like uh, fighting games. You know, I think is really, really simple. And um, so I would for, for people because that's a really hard question because with people who, who are autistic, um, I mean they might want to challenge a game. I mean I think. Smash Brothers fits somewhere in between because there's different modes of hardness and easy, and so if you want to try easy first or try hard first, you know I think that's really up to them to decide. And we're now going to interview James, who I understand has a very interesting background uh, related to gaming and video. Mm -hmm. um, take it from here. Hi, um, as all, as with the first interview, he's, he James has had a lot of experience in video games. Mm -hmm. Now, James, tell us about the video games you've played. Well, obviously, I've I've played uh, Smash Brothers and in its various incarnations, all the way up to all the way up to Brawl on the Wii. Um, I recently had a very 
strong, uh, I, I recently had a very strong phase with the game Arkham Asylum, which I think is a, a, a terrific brawler style game. Uh, but one game that I've been playing for years, and I, I, I just keep coming back to it because I never get enough of it, is actually a very, it's one that people don't often talk about. It's called Dragon's Nest, or Dra Dragon Nest. It's on Steam, and it's a, an MMO RPG that does everything that I think World of Warcraft should have. Uh, but... Um, so James, uh, concerning the film and how it discussed the topic of autism uh, and gaming, what are your particular thoughts about that? Well, I always, I, I, I think that it's a very valid argument that's proposed in, in the film. I, I always thought that the, the, the mass appeal that Smash Brothers has as a franchise as a whole is the same type of Friend, uh, appeal that uh, that Marvel films have, uh, particularly I'm I'm going to use Avengers as an example because that was an extremely popular one, and I'm looking forward to this next one. It's kind of like taking all of your toys. Uh, it's kind of like being a kid taking all of your toys out of the basket, and uh, and making up some kind of story in your head about them, and that's essentially what what mainly the first Smash Brothers does is it, it very much incorporates that aspect. Um, as, for the, as for the rest of it, I think that, that, there's, that there are some connections that, that, are, that are made by the, uh, the, the maker that, um, that really sort of address elephant in the room issues. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have met people, I have met people who are on the spectrum before who, who do, uh, who do uh, have fetishization and uh, I'm not going to name any names because nobody in here knows who they are, but um, in any case, I will, I will say that that I think is uh, just in the, in the end how it, uh, it describes a personal struggle. Um, it, the personal struggle aspect that it interprets the game series as a whole, that uh, I think is is very broad, whether or not you're on the on the spectrum. And now we're going to be speaking with Fred. Um, what did you think of the film? I really enjoyed it, and I like the idea of. Um, video games and things like that being designed to help people with, with autism or other disabilities. I work with a therapist whose son has worked on some video games for people with post-traumatic stress syndrome and things like that. And I, I thought it was great to hear about you know, similar programs for people with autism. And I really like the idea of uh, game designers being conscious of other issues other than just how to shoot bad guys or help good guys, and I had in mind the idea of working on a, games that would uh, kind of teach people different uh, ways of dealing with situations and what the, the impact of handling something one way would be versus handling something a different way. And I have a son who's designing some, working on a video game at the moment, but I don't think it has any real social mm -hmm. consciousness to it, I must, I must admit. but. Uh, I wish it did. Well, so uh, how many, how many video? So, what, which video games do you play? I don't actually play games, but I have a son who's constantly playing video games, and he's played them ever since he was a, a kid. And he's, a, you know, all the ones from uh, Command and Conquer and Worms was one of his favorite. And I don't really know which ones he's into now, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's, it's definitely a whole world out there that I, I haven't really been that personally involved with, but I've just watched it over his shoulder. And how has this affected you? Well, I mean, it's affected me in the sense that I have a, a kid who is, well, I have two children who are somewhere on the autism spectrum, and, uh, you know, one of them has basically addicted to the video games. It's one socialization by interacting people with people in the gaming community. So in that sense, it's had a positive impact on him. 
and I really like the idea of him uh, working on a game that might have some social consciousness to it, and I hope that he might take some of the lessons from this uh, film today and maybe incorporate that into some of his future work.